What is up? Thank you for coming to my channel, Prison POV. So, today, this video, I'm going to talk about some of my tattoos. I'm going to focus on the ones in the face, the head, the neck up. A lot of people are curious and ask questions. Some of these tattoos have very good stories. Not every tattoo has a story. Some people say that. Oh, my tattoos have a story. At least not all mine. I, I mean, my favorite tattoos. Tattoo on my ankle of a toaster. I like it has a piece of bread in it, even has the plug. I can't say it has a story. But some of these tattoos I do have have crazy stories. And that's where we're going to go. We're going to kick it off. Trip on this. First tattoo I got on my neck. It's right here. The writing that says, do sin. That's what I had right there. Do sin is the end of a Pantheric song called Slaughter. The outro. So I do sin, gen, 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 and I do sin. Now I believe in like do sin to this day. Several years ago, and I got this tattoo. Thought it was cool. Be that as a may. So, what happened with this tattoo? I don't believe in messing with homeboys or ladies. Just as an unbreakable rule. But, but one time it got messy. And you have to ask yourself, you know, what is a homeboy? I mean, let's start there. Not everyone deserves your loyalty. You'll you'll find out what I'm. You'll find out what I mean here in a minute. I had this homeboy, Tattoo Mike. Done a lot of dealings with him. Lived in Rex and he lives in Greenfields, right up the road, right up Eden Avenue. A lot of our dealings were not good. Come up short. He just had some bad business dealings with the dude. Still an associate. Messed with him quite a bit. Whatever. One time, he came to my house. I'm living with my... It's not even my house. It's my cousin's house. I'm living there. A lot of people are in and out. I wasn't even there. He comes over with a, a stereo. So a receiver. Part of the stereo. And he brings it over. Trying to sell it for some sort of deal. I wasn't there. We weren't there. So he left it in our closet. And then he left. And then someone came by. I, I don't know. It, 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 I never saw it. Someone took it out of the closet. I don't know what happened. How it went down. Did he even leave it in the closet? Some might suggest. I don't know. I never saw no receiver. He was chipped out. He was mad about it. Me and my cousin like, all right, we'll, we'll cover it. You know, what would you want for? We'll, we'll work it out. You know, next time in the future, don't be dropping stuff off. Just we'll figure it out. Well, shit. A month or two past that, I'd forgotten all about that thing. Came by the whole deal with the receiver. I myself had a receiver, a different receiver. I was calling around trying to get rid of it. I called him. I got this receiver. Bring it over, he says. Had the homeboy Brad drive me over there. I go there. Here you go, dude. And he's like, no. He goes, that's mine. I'll take that as payment for the one that got stolen out of your closet. And I was like, no. I was like, I will cover it. You know, but not, not here, not today. I can't do it, not with this. It's not going to go down like that. Like, I just can't. Can't do it like that. Nope, sorry. He pulls a knife on me. Then my home, homeboy Brad takes off running. That was the crazy thing about it. I had to stop him. Brad, wait, don't run off. I said, if you start stabbing me, you're going to have to take me to the hospital. I mean, where the fuck are you going? I'm going to let him go. There's a receiver. He pulled a knife. Get busy, dude. If you want to get your poke on. I don't give a fuck. It was about a knife like that big. I don't give a shit. You're not getting this receiver. I got something in my eye. Brad, where are you going? Anyway, I tripped him out that I guess I called him called him on his bluff. He threw the knife down. I, I didn't really see him for several years after that. And maybe I did see him. Just whatever. Then I go to prison. I get out of prison. I got no spot. I got no house. I got no stuff. The girl I was with, she had my shit. She ended up with some other dude. I'm out. I got to start over from square one like I've done it a thousand times before. And it sucks ass. Here I am on the streets. Let's do the damn thing at my cousin's house. He's got to go to work in the morning. I'm already thinking, what am I going to do tomorrow? I mean, I'm scounding. I'm already in the streets. I'm going to let her rip. So I'm thinking, what's my next move? I know a tattoo might lose down the road. Let's start there. I'm going to go by there. It's late at night. But sometimes you catch him. He's in the mix, running amok. Sometimes you catch him. He's just working, wanting to do good. You know, he's, he ain't got nothing going on. So I'm going to take a gamble. I'm going to go by there. See what dude's up to. See what he's up to. Go by there, knock on the door. His old lady answers. He's in jail for beating her up. She's mad about it. Come on, in. Come on in, she says. I went in. Whatever happened, happened. We kicked it. We did the damn thing. Be that as it may. But I did him a favor in the sense that he wanted. she wanted to, to make a full-blown relationship. Just pretty much tell him, sorry about your luck. I'm a splinter. I was like, no, we can't do all that. I mean, it was, it was cool and it was fun. It was real and it was fun, but it wasn't real fun. We can't do it like that, though. Anyway, he gets out of jail like a couple weeks later, and I keep going by there. Don't say nothing to you, Mike. 
course, obviously. I mean, why would I? I'm not going to throw myself out there. I keep going by over there, doing business, deal with them and shit, hanging out. I think that was part of the deal. I, didn't, I was going to say this. I, I'm kind of putting my foot in my mouth because when I was preparing the story and making my notes, I'm like, should I go there? This is part of the story. I'm you know, fuzzy on it, so I didn't want to bring it up. And here I went ahead and brought it up. I, I think that was part of the deal of me saying I don't want to be in a relationship with you. Like, I don't have nothing further to do with you. You're going to have to be with him when he gets out. She's like, well, you better keep on coming by over here. If you don't keep on coming over and visit him, that way I could see you, then I'm just going to not let him come home. It's going to make a big deal. So, to, so in order so that he would be able to come back to his house and to his family, I made the deal. I'd like to continue to go by over there just to visit with him so she could see me. It was crazy. Jerry Springer type shit. So, be that as it may, I am going over there. And hey, he has a tattoo gun. I decide I want to get do sin outside of my neck. I hadn't had no tattoos yet. I had the sick boy face right here. We'll talk about that at a different time. Some of you guys have wrote letters to. I have... um. I'll put that in my letters. Sometimes I'll put it on my name to sick boy. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. He's going to put this deuce in on my neck. So we break out the tattoo gun. We'll kick it back. I'm saying he's doing it. She sits across from me and starts showing me the biscuit. She had a dress on. She was pulling it up. She was licking her lips. pinching. I mean, I, I got to be real careful what I say. It kind of makes me mad. I don't want to go there. But my last video, YouTube did not monetize. I don't know what the hell their problem is. They just pick and choose. I didn't think there's anything really that wrong with it. Just... You know, how would you like it? if you went to work and after work your boss is like, hey, you know, cool, good looking out on the job you did today, but I'm not going to pay you. I'm not going to pay you for today's work. I mean, that's how it feels. You work hard on the video, put it out. YouTube is like, nah, Charlie Holmes. So I guess I got to be careful what I say. So much for freedom of speech. Be that as she was sitting across me flashing the biscuit. I'm like, Stop. he's tattooing on me. Imagine if he would have caught it in his peripheral. He could have, could have done anything. Should have taken a real gamble, a real risk. I'm like, Stop. 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 anyways. I ended up getting through it and begin the tat. Things are hard to sell out there. For instance, one time there's this dude. He had a legit tablecloth. This tablecloth was like from the 1700s. It was like single stitch. It had like the right stains on it. By stains, I mean like it was discolored, water colorings. If you have this tablecloth from the 1700s, you don't want it like pure white, like a brand new looking sheet. It was like old and beat up all the right places. It had the right kind of rips, single stitch, camel hair, 1700s, a tablecloth. But try telling the plug that. Like, hey, what's up, homeboy? What's up, dog? All right, yeah, I got this tablecloth, man. You, been, you interested? Yeah, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to come off this tablecloth, homeboy. Don't sleep on it, dog. You want this tablecloth? It's from the 1700s. I'm not going to want it. I don't care how tight the tablecloth is. I'm not going to take the time. No. No, I'm a tablecloth. We're on the homeboy's house. He does a deuce in tattoo. She's showing the biscuit. He's like, hey, I want to get rid of it. He had a pin. I admit it was a badass pin. It was a very badass pin. I believe it was a gold pin. It was a gold pin. It had gold on it. It had its own box. It was a pin in a box. He's like, dude, I want to sell this badass pin. I was like, you sure? It's a fucking nice pin. He's like, yeah, I want to sell this pin. It's a gold pin in a box. I was like, all right. Call my homie. My plug. Hey, dude, I got this badass gold pin in a box. He's like, yeah, bring it. Sound real excited about it. I was like, okay, I'm going to take it to him. He sounds real excited. Like, maybe he's been looking for a gold pin in a box. I don't know. So when I go meet my plug, my dude, my homie, he sees it. He's disappointed. He's like, I thought you said tins. Not a pin. I thought you said I had some gold tins, like 10-inch woofers in a box or gold. He's like, I'll be all over that. That sounds interesting, like stereo equipment. As far as the pin, mm, like, this is a badass pin. It is a gold pin in a box. It, you know, right's, right or left-handed. He wasn't interested. I felt embarrassed. I think I ended up just like leaving the pin in his house. at playing. I was like, I don't really care about the pin. Then I went, went back to dude's pad, tattoo Mike. They weren't, I said, he, didn't, he wasn't interested. He didn't want it. He's like, well, he sounded really interested in him when you were talking to him on the phone. You are here. He misheard me. Trust me, it's embarrassing. Don't make me relive it. Trust me, he doesn't want him. He's like, where, are, where, where's the pin? I, got, I, I forgot it. He got mad. Fucking pulled a knife on me again. What's up with this dude? Him pulling these knives. And I'll be damned if... Gosh darn it. I'll be damned if the dude I was with that time didn't run too. What's up with these people and these runnings? I guess they're just trained to run when, when, it, when it gets crazy. I mean, for instance, I know this dude named Stretch. He has the keys of the yard when I was in the farm. I met him, a good friend of mine. I got out and I dealt with him. We hung out. I was at his house one night, like about midnight. He wanted a flashlight. Stretch wanted a flashlight. He's like a big ass dude, too, man. Tall, buff. He had the keys to the yard. He's, a biz he's with the business. We punched now, ask questions later, and he was a sick with it type dude. Man is pad. He wants a flashlight. At the time, I was clipping Home Depot left and right. I said, dude, I can get you a flashlight. No problem. I think we worked some kind of deal. Like I said, it was midnight. I left. I ended up going by his pad at like around 8 a.m. I was going to go get the flashlight to like around 10 or 11. So I, I didn't, you know, I went back to his pad. It was my mistake, I guess, because it tripped him out. So I came back, you know, I, I knock on the door and he answers it. First thing he says, you got my flashlight? I go, no. And he throws a punch and socks me. The dude who I was with, Ryan, took off running. 
Again. Hey, dude, where are you going? It's like, but I gotta start hanging out with some more solid motherfuckers, man. Hey, where are you going? I'm gonna need a ride. Don't go too far. And he was like, hey, how's he running? And he laughs. What the fuck's that, dude? I was like, I don't know. And I was like, what, what the fuck's that for, motherfucker? Where's my flesh? Are you trying to rip me off? It was this old lady. You're gonna rip my old lady off? It was, she, this old lady wanted it. You can't rip off the wifey. I was like, no, dog. I haven't had a chance to go there yet, bro. Damn, kick back. You want me to do, when I go get the flesh, do you want me to get you a watch, too? It's only like 8 o'clock. And I, know, I know the sun came up and I probably threw you off. But anyway, be that as a man. Dude, he pulled a knife on me again. Little homie Chris took off running. Be that as a man, man. I haven't fucking seen that do since. He does do sin tattoo. Now, people ask, do tattoos hurt? And I always say, depends on who does it. Because some people know how to... And some people just... It's all heavy hand. Around the do sin, I had this dude put a skull around it. Look how thick those lines are. This hurt like a son of a bitch. Hurt so bad that it got halfway done. I said, I'm done. I'm not going to do no more. You can call me Little Homie Half Skull. It's my name from now on. What's up, bro? Call me Half Skull, dog. No, because I am not going to let you finish. And it wasn't even so much the needle. It was the wiping. Because you they go, Ehh. and they take the rag and they wipe. Because when they do a line, ink comes out. Blood, whatever. They say, Ehh. wipe. Ehh. Wipe. Dude, that wiping was just kicking my ass. I was done with it. Hell no. Put on pause. Finish this shit later. But Hot Rod's like, no, you got to sit down. You're going to do it. We can't call you Little Homie Half Skull. Get it done. Anyway, I'll talk more about that tattoo later. Dude from Matavia did it. A- interesting story with their gang. Not going to get into it now. Be that as it may. So, what else happened, man? Another one of my, my favorite tattoos. This one right here. The skull in the temple. I gotta do something real quick. Where's my fucking watch at, man? The skull in the temple. Let's say it loud. All right. All right, man. Is it 340 or 910? It's 910. We're going to stop about 9.30 or so. This tattoo right here on my temple is probably about one of my favorite ones I have. I got inspired by this tattoo. I'm all... Okay. I got inspired by this tattoo because there's a skinhead I knew. He was he sat next to me in Wasco Reception, age five. He had a tattoo right there. His was like a little skull wearing a snap cap smoking a cigarette. I just loved how it looked. I just loved how this a little piece of art right there. It's the perfect spot for the... I was like, dude, I'm going to get a tattoo right there, man. Good idea. I'm going to get like a little something right there. This dude, though, he was in trouble. He slept next to me, and he'd be like, always, when you're stressed out in prison, you know you got an issue coming, the homeboys want to beat you up, you tend to want to find somebody to talk about it, because it's stressful. Think about it, you're in there, you can't leave, and you know they're going to end up wanting your ass down the road, and you're like, hey, homeboy, check it out, this is what happened to me, dog. You want to get off your chest. He was telling me he's in trouble. He's like, when I get to where I'm going, he goes, when I left the place I was at, I was in trouble, and I know it ain't squashed, when I get to where I'm going, more trouble. I was like, what happened? He said, I read a kite. He said, someone gave him some kites. And what they do, they'll booby trap them. They'll put like a piece of tape on it and scribble a pen. And then when you open it, you'll never be able to line the lines back up from the pen. They do all kinds of little things. There's no way you can really open a kite and read it and fold it back up. Stupid even try. You know, not everything is for everyone. They want you to know they'll tell you about it. But why even that nosy? That's like an incredibly amount of nosiness to want to get someone's kite. Unless you think they're writing about you. But that's me. Different subject. He said he got into kites and read them. I was like, all right, cool. Then later on down the road, I forgot. No, that's not what happened. What happened was he was choking the chicken. When the nurse came up the window to give him his pills and pill call. You know, don't got a little window nurse comes in. Last name and your last of your of your number, that's your last two and your last name, and he's right there playing pocket pinball. Home, she went and told the homeboys, and they got that ass. They put it out there and he was just done. He couldn't clean it up, couldn't come back from it. Went to current value level four. In fact, he's there. Well, I'm not throw his name out. There's one of my homies and he rolled it up. Right on the spot. But I looked forever for the right pattern for two years. Finally I'm a max meet, I bump into the homeboy. Mason from Taft, and he had this pattern of you know when you're when you're doing time you show people your your pictures your family artwork that you have different stuff hey check this out and I was looking at art pictures he had and I saw this it was this like his old lady's name I was like dude that's mine thank you for finding this pattern for me and thank you for holding it this is a pattern I've been looking for for two years it's gonna go right in my head thank you dude I appreciate you finding it holding it for me he's like what it's like yeah it's mine and he was a good friend of mine he gave it to me. One day, though, we did almost get in a fight over horseplay. There's a lot of horseplay in there. I've, I've horseplay and fought every silly I had. Not real fight, just, you just wrestle and you just fight. You just want to, you want to try each other out. You just want to fight. You mean, you're bored, you're in your cell, you're working out, just take off on each other. It's this high energy, alpha energy, just to, testosterone? I can't even say it. Testosterone? i probably spell it quicker than I can say it. That shit. Anyways, man, to get you going, you just want to start fucking people up. Especially when you're working out. So, we were horse playing, 
and he socked me, and it was really made a loud noise. Everyone like, went, ooh, we're like a little dorm. So I jumped up. I hit him so hard, it made my wrist hurt. Again, everyone's like, ooh. He was like, what motherfucker? And I was mad. He was mad. We're really getting ready to start. We're like, we're getting ready to fucking chuck him. But then I noticed five or six Southsiders in the corner. They're like, oh, yeah. Mason and I both saw it at the same time. We're like, wait a minute. We're not going to beat these dudes in entertainment. You're not supposed to be fighting your own race anyway. These dudes were posted up. Couldn't wait to watch us beat the fuck out of each other. We're like, no. If we're going to handle this, we'll let them go to yard. We'll stay back and do it. But no, why would we even handle anything? We just got horseplay went a little bit too far. We're actually really good, good friends. And I'm glad he gave me that. Mother fizzucking. Damn, I can't even think of the word. Pattern! It's a pattern. You know how you can like fuck with someone in prison if you see an ugly tattoo they have? You say, hey, boy, let me get that pattern, dog. No, damn well, you don't want that pattern. So Mason gave me the pattern. I went to a law school reception. I was in there with a the dude from uh, Fres, he was a Fresnac from Fresno named Sketch. And we had a tattoo gun. It's very rare that you're going to have drugs in Wallace Reception. It's very rare that you're going to have any kind of tattoo gun or batteries or ink or any of that shit. Reception is like real dry. You don't have your radio. You don't have any kind of sweat. So you just have bare bones, state issue shit. But there was a female cop who was hooking everybody up. And it's really crazy, dude. I'm, I'm really into female psychology and how that shit works. And that female guard that was hooking us up, bringing us in stuff, let us organ- orchestrate fights. That's why I shouldn't get in trouble. A side and B side, we got to bring somebody over from B side to uh, get into a fight. And anyways, everyone was all on her. Hey, dude, trying to get stuff. I never talked to her, not once. Never did I say a fucking word to her. I would always just sit there and she'd always come by. Hey, how come you never? And it fucked up that everyone was on her because she was a girl and they wanted favors. But dude, I just thought, you know what? I don't want to stand in line for that shit. Everyone's already on her. It's like, Fuck it, I'll get the, the crumbs, I'll get the leftovers. She'll give something to homeboy, like some ink, and he'll give a little bit to me. I don't need to jam her up for nothing. But I fucked with her. She all jam me up. Speaking of horseplay, though, how about when I was in the hole? CMC West, but the hole's in CMC East. My celly, Clucky, my E, him and I start fighting. We're getting it. All of a sudden, I hear, get him, Clucky, get him. Like, what? A dude who lived next to us is watching us through a little tiny hole. They can't even really see. There's several of them. I don't even know why they're there. They're like screw holes. Maybe for old like bunk beds or like maybe like book racks or something back in the day. There's like five or six little screw holes. We had to go all over and put apple stickers on them. This fucking fool's watching us. Get him, Clucky, get him. How long have you been watching us, motherfucker? Anyways, I was crazy. So yeah, it's definitely horseplay. Homeboy Sketch put that on me. Wassel Reception. Good dude. What else I got to say about that? Not too much. Hey, about this tattoo though. Bacardi Bat. The Bacardi Bat is a symbol from OWT, Oceana White Trash. But Mike Tevis, is this watch even accurate? I really got to keep track of time, fellas. Hate to do this, but got to do it. Mike Tevis is from San Luis Obispo and from Bakersfield. He's from both. And he's the one who really started OWT. He's a good friend of mine. He gave me permission, the green light, to get the tattoo. I got out, got out of prison. I was on the streets. That's why you see it has color. One of the only tattoos I have that has color in it. And I went to a place called Rats Tats. What kind of name is that? Rats Tats. He has this little tattoo shop. He did it out of, out of the garage, out of his pad. And it's like, hey, rat, can I get a tat? Kind of a trip, though. Good dude. You know, I didn't charge me nothing. Did a tattoo. I drank the stuff. That, I don't know what the hell it was. I drank it and passed out. Woke up ready to fight everybody until I realized I still had all my stuff in my pockets. I mean, that's kind of rad. I didn't know anybody there. I woke up. Well, hey, my... Oh, they're like, what's up? What's up? Oh, you're cool. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm cool. Yeah, I have everything still. Crazy. So, it gave me that. But the homeboy of mine, a good brother of mine, a good friend of mine, I was in prison with him. I told him Rats Tats did that. He goes, I got to get that dude. I got to get Rats Tats. I said, well, why is that? He said, he, uh, he, he covered up my name on one of my ex-old ladies. I said, is he a friend of yours? Do you know him? He's like, no. I go, he doesn't owe you the loyalty. Why wouldn't he? He has a business. Some chick comes. They cover this name up. He doesn't really know you or her. He probably charged 60 bucks or whatever. And you're mad about that? He said, yeah, no one covers my name. He was really mad about it. And he's down, he's with the business too. In fact, one time, I'm, at, I'm fresh out of prison. I end up talking to some dude on the phone. I, I don't even know how. He hung out with one of the homegirls. My brother kicked another. I end up talking to this dude on the phone. He was talking a lot of shit to me. He's getting cra- crazy with me. It's like, what, dude? So I go over there, confront him. And he was still a little bit kind of r- rude. and like, But he didn't want to fight. He's kind of like aggressive, drunk. But he wasn't disrespectful. I end up making a deal with him. He'd stole some card, buy some rims. Again, the 200 bucks. I said, I'll come pick up the rims tomorrow. He was, he was like, okay, I'll go get the car. Bring him one jacket. And I said, no, I don't have time for you. to go get the car and take the rims off now. I, I trust you. Because trust me, I, 
I'll be back for my money in the rims. I mean, I'm not going to let you burn me, so I got no problem giving you 200 bucks, come back to the rims tomorrow, whatever. Then the next day, when I come, no, the next day he calls me talking a bunch of other weird shit. Getting crazy with me again. I thought, fuck this. I had homeboy, who's mad at rat's tats, pick up, and I had two other dudes with me. So we're four deep, driving over there, but first we go to a cigarette store. And we walk in, and I said, everybody, we got to think of monetization now, so everybody get yourself one of these. But it wouldn't be one of those, it would be more like, everyone get yourself one of these. Everyone get one. So we all got one. We drive over there. And it's funny, dude. It's so predictable. We pull up. Only me and homeboy who's mad at rats tats went in. The other two you just saw it. Oh, hey, I got to take this call. I'll, I'll be right in. Now, you know, when we pull up and we're doing something like that. We got to get a right in. I mean, you can't sit in the car, let dude see us out the window. He's like thinking, what are they doing? Whatever. No, a situation like this, you got to pull up and jump right and go right in. So that's what I did. Me and dude, I got out. Whoever follows me, follows me. I don't give a fuck. I brought three of you with me. I pull up and get out. As it turns out, like I said, it's one following me. Other dude's like, hey, hey, I gotta make this phone call. Very, very important. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay, right. Sorry, I'll be already in, I swear. Yes, yes. Then the other dude's like, oh, man. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Dude, my key. I had the key to my key. And I cannot. Oh, man. Uh, so you have one dude walking in a circle, like, checking his pockets. The other dude like this. Crazy thing. Whatever. Ride or die went in with me. Right in there. We walk in. What's up? He had a big old, he had one of these in his pocket. We walk in, and the dude pulled out his pocket and threw it in the sink. I don't want a little beef. Like, what, what's up with you, bro? Why do you keep talking all this mad shit to me on the phone? We come over, I did this deal with you. It was just, it was just madness. Anyway, me and that dude also noticed we did, we go to Vegas. We went to motherfucking Vegas. I don't know how it happened. Me and three other dudes, all tatted back, abscounding from California, fresh out of prison, go to Vegas. In fact, I had like four thousand dollars in cash. They wouldn't even give us a room, but but we were like in a long line. The first place we went, they told us no, they didn't have any rooms. But people behind us were getting rooms. It's crazy, it's like straight. What? So we went and got a room somewhere else. Stayed there partying, whatever. We wanted to go swimming. It was summertime. We ended up in, in like a wedding. Somehow, here's a wedding, and we ended up in the pool with all the people from the wedding. It was this crazy thing. And a syringe falls out of dude's pocket, and it was, and it was floating. And everyone's like, "Oh fuck, the syringe! What the hell?" Like, is that, that yours? It's like, no, yuck. I'm like, yes, it is. It's the only one we had. We needed it. Like, we'll throw it away for you. Yuck. Like, no, it's not ours. We'll grab it. Ugh. I mean, took in. It was just wild. And, of course, I'm fresh out the pan. I got a little money. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. I'm a man. We know it all. Men like. I just did 30 months. So I send all the homeboys to go gamble. Let me get the room by myself. I had noticed in Vegas... As I was walking up and down the strip, there's all these dudes, mostly Pisces, and they had all these cards. And they literally, like, bang the cards together and make a noise, and trying to hand you out these cards. And on the cards, would be like a female, with some pretty looking girl with a phone number. So I had probably, like, 50 of these cards, like, some I had, wanted, like, and some just got handed in my hand as I walked by. And some homeboys had, they brought back in the motel, cards everywhere. They go gambling, I look at them, I take my time, I'm going to call one of these girls. And I'm going to get the exact, I'm just going to take my time and get the perfect one. So I'm looking, uh, you know, too tall, too short, too wide, too thin. No, I like this. Nah. This the one. I got, okay, this one. Call. She's on her way. That's not who shows up. So, something else comes showing up. I was like, you don't look anything like I was like, she said, no, it's just an advertisement. Like, we don't even know, that's, we don't know, we just photograph, get those photographs from somewhere else. Like, None of those girls even work for dating to see. I think it's a scam. It's like a hustle. The catfish thing. I spent one hour looking at all these cards. And you, you come strolling in. I, she tried striking up a deal with me. She was in four digits. Like 2000 2500 bucks. I was like, whoa, that's a lot. I was like, I got 40 47 48 48 50 I mean, we're, we're too far apart. We're not going to make it work. No way in hell I'd give 2000 I did have to do 2000 bucks. matter of fact. <clears throat> all kinds of money. Just had an inheritance. But not for her. Not even for the real girl on the real car. She could not even got 2000 But I just thought that was so crazy. But yeah, it's a May, man. I need, I need a better a better way to keep time. We're at 24 minutes. I want to talk about the Hose Love It tattoo. Hose Love It tattoo. And this tattoo right here I got from a, a guy. I saw a drawing. And it was this dude. The drawing and, and the... The dude had this fire thing on his chin. The drawing. And I was like, I want that to tattooed. Like, what, the dude? I was like, no, just the thing on his chin, on my chin. The thing right there, yeah. And the guy who gave it to me and who drew the picture, 
There's a guy from Sacramento and he's in a band, a rock band. And I sometimes I'm playing my guitar in my live, I straight ripped him off your badass guitar rhythm. Because he sang and he played guitar in this rock band, he'd play some of his songs. And one rhythm was a sick dude. I like I would I would just two eleven, I would jack you. If you're playing guitar and it's something dope, I would just I'll watch you and I'll like memorize it and later I'll be like, hey, check out the song I play. And I jack the dopest song from him. And once in a while I play on my life. And I do say, hey, I stole this song on my life, I tell you guys. But I haven't always said that. Sometimes I'll just be like, check this out. Whatever. Be that as the main. What else can I talk about? The sick boy tattoo. I want to talk about when I got this tattoo, the spider web underneath here. I was bent in such a position and I was forced to look out. I couldn't move. Homeboy's old lady. There's a big picture of her, and she was, like, kissing. I almost did it, imitated her face. How weird would that have been? Uh, you know, Splinter, you don't have to always act your thing out. Anyway, she's making a kissing, a loving, you know, shining eyes. And it was weird, because I was just forced to look at it. And I was like, finally, he's like, dude, move the picture. Just made me feel weird. I was like, move the picture, old lady. I don't want to be, like, staring at your old lady like this. He's like, hey, dude's looking at my old lady. What do you have thought that? Because I was looking at his old lady. Because, I mean, I had to. It was, like, almost crammed in my face. I like, moved that. So this came out good. This, the the face of my throat, I got outlined and then shaded the very next day. Me and my homeboy Jamie Atkins got the same tattoo right here. Got from Thumper from Hell's Angel, Walsway Yard. Jamie Atkins, rest in peace, was doing a removal. A new Folsom like about a year ago and the sh cop shot him. It's crazy, man. No warning shots. Boom. Imagine you're just <laughs> plugging away and, and dude, those bullets will kill you. I can see stuff all the time. YouTube stuff, people take three or four bullets, people get shot. I don't, I'm not with one of those many 14s. Not with those like... Machine guns. Those are guns. They, they get shot once in those, and it's a rapsky. I mean, it goes in there and says, man, shout to Jamie Atkins. Such a solid dude. I was doing, we were doing time one time with a stepbrother. We didn't know it was a stepbrother. And this dude, we just took him as a knack. He just had, like, he didn't care how his hair was all floppy. And you got to care about your parents. You want your clothes to be, you know, you want to be looking bonnaroo. And you got to care how you look even in there. Because it's a reflection of your character. And it's kind of respect you're going to get. If you're just sloppy and you sleep in your clothes and you're wrinkled like this dude. And we start calling him 